worked. Oh, good morning. Good morning. It's not even 9.30 a.m. here by me. I was up really early. Had a little sleep. I want to sing a hymn with you today to start. I've, I've sung this hymn in another video before, but you know, every once in a while, you, you, you just, you just got to sing a hymn. I want to challenge you, whoever you are, whoever you are. You know, most of you, you have a laptop and the majority of you have one of these hell phones, right? Sing a hymn. Put it on YouTube. Who cares if you're, if you've heard my voice before? Who cares what your voice sounds like? You're singing hymns unto the Lord. Doesn't matter if you sound like Kermit the Frog. But it'd be it would be nice to see more of you. Taking a rest. You don't have to show your face. But it would be nice to see more of you sing some hymns and put them on YouTube or on other platforms. But like I said, I'm, I want to sing with you a hymn, um, which I've sung before in other videos, but it's very meet and appropriate for what we're going to be talking about today. Now, I am not as proficient in singing hymns as our beloved brother at Joyful Noise, nor as efficient or knowledgeable of hymns as our dearly beloved brother, my best friend, Alexander Hartley. But, um, eh. softly and tenderly, <sighs> softly and tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling for you and for me. See on the portals, he's waiting and watching, watching for you and for me. Come home, come home, ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling, calling, O oh sinner, come home. Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading, pleading for you and for me? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies? Mercies for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye that who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, O oh sinner, come home. Time is now fleeting, the moments are passing, passing from you and from me. Shadows are gathering, deathbeds are coming, <laughs> coming for you and for me. Come home, come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, O oh sinner, come home. Oh, for the wonderful love he has promised. Promised for you and for me. 
Though we have sinned, he has mercy and pardon. Pardon for you and for me. Come home. Come home. Ye who are weary, come home. Earnestly, tenderly, Jesus is calling. Calling, oh sinner, come home. <laughs> you know that that lyric there. <clears throat> Why should we tarry when Jesus is pleading? Why should we linger and heed not his mercies? As a beloved sister once said, who is waiting for us, why do we cling to this, to this, when we know that we have our Lord waiting for us? Well, like Paul, you know, he said that, um, I want to get out of here and depart for to be with Jesus is much far better. But yet it is needful for you. That's what Paul said. Okay, a big part. But there again, sometimes we get this thing where why, why do we cling to this when we know that heaven is waiting and that the one who saved us and put up with all our palaver is waiting for us. Please get your authorized version of the scriptures and please follow me along in the scriptures that you and I will be looking at today. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse of what we are going to be looking at today. Check me out. Keep me accountable. And I'm going to speak to you as though you are following me along. Hmm. You've heard that uh, phrase, youth is wasted on the young, right? And very interesting. I'll turn to Ecclesiastes chapter 11 in your authorized version of the scriptures. Follow me along. Keep me accountable. Check me out in the scriptures. Follow me along word for word, verse by verse. Okay, make sure I'm not skipping a groove. Okay, sometimes the mouth goes a little bit faster than the brain. Okay, so check me out. Uh, one moment, please. Excuse me. Yes, when you get, when you're a child, when you're a child, when you're a child, a young child, you want to grow up quickly, don't you? Because you want to do those things that the grown-ups tell you that you can't do because you're too young. And whatever it is, right? Looking back in uh, my life, um, in my youth, I remember wanting to get to the age of 18 so I could smoke those accursed, <clears throat> disgusting cigarettes. And then, for lost people, you know, then... Uh, when you hit 18, you want to get to 21 so you can buy alcohol or go to a strip club or whatever, whatever. So when you're young, you want to grow up so you can do these things. But then when you grow up, you realize that what you are told by this wicked world at being at that age isn't all that it's cracked out to be. And then the older it seems that people get, they want to go back to that to those pristine days of youth. Isn't that ironic? Isn't that ironic? Very ironic. Very ironic. We've talked about death before. But you know, a majority of you, now not all of you, I'm only 48 years of age. My time's coming to an end. 
And it's coming to an end because as a young man, I did some horrible things, um, which I'm forgiven for. But see, while the Lord forgives you, that doesn't always necessarily mean that he's going to remove the consequences of your actions. Perfect example is David. Okay. Yes, the Lord still used David. Yes. But, oh, David paid a heavy price for his sin with Bathsheba, for the murder of Uriah. Oh, he, he paid for that for the rest of his life with Absalom. Okay. And his other son, um, Adonja. Okay. Oh, he paid for it. I bet if you were to ask David, is there anything that you would change if you would go back? Yeah. Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 7 on to verse 10. Most of you, I reckon, are probably younger than I am, and I'm only 48 years of age. There are those of you who are older than I am, and you're going to be able to identify with this. When you're young, you think you're invincible. You fall down, you get right back up. Things don't hamper you because you're young. But the older you get, the harder it is to bounce back. And especially when you live a life of sin. I was The Lord saved me in my early 30s. If I could go back and change everything, I would. But Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verses 7 on to verse 10. Truly the light is sweet, and a pleasant thing it is for the eyes to behold the sun. Oh yeah, when I go out there with uh, Zena or with my wife on a walk or whatever, and the sun's out, I'll, I'll just stand there and let the sun hit me in the face. Yes. But if a man live many years and rejoice in them all, yet let him remember the days of darkness, for they shall be many. All that cometh is vanity. This life that we, you know, rejoice in all of our life that we have, it's, it's just for a moment. It's a, it's a, a player that, uh, like Shakespeare says, it's a vain player, a vain shoe that comes and dance and struts his stuff upon the stage and then is heard of no more. You know, it's the tale told by an idiot full of sound and fury signifying nothing. One of my favorite quotes from Shakespeare, of course. But the life that you have today is not eternal. The life that... If you can't breathe, you know, the life that you have is not eternal. Your soul is eternal. But this life right here, right now, today, my friend, is not eternal. Most of you, I reckon, are at least in your 20s, maybe in your early 30s. And you need to consider these things because guess what? Even though the television and these things tell you that you can reclaim youth with certain drugs or put plastic surgery on your face or whatever, you're going to get old if you're fortunate enough. You're going to get old. Your body's going to go get weaker. It's thermodynamics. Everything breaks down with time. Like uh, Mickey Mantle said, if I had known that I was going to live this long, I would have taken better care of myself. Those of you in your 20s, you take heed to this. Rejoice, O young man, in thy youth, and let thy heart cheer thee in the days of thy youth, and walk in the ways of thine heart, and in the sight of thine eyes. But know thou 
that for all these things God will bring thee into judgment. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart and put away evil from thy flesh. Sorrow from your heart. It, this does not talk about you being flippant, uncaring, careless about things. No, evil in your heart leads to sorrow. Because when you regard what is evil, and what is evil? What the Lord says in the scriptures, that's what evil is. You and I, we, we can't truly really judge what is truly good and truly evil apart from the Lord Jesus Christ who will dwell in those who are saved and his word, the authorized version of the scriptures. This, this right here, the authorized version, is where you find out what is good and what is evil. And that spirit of truth, our Lord Jesus Christ, our Father, if you come to him on his terms and he saves you and seals you until the day of redemption, he will guide you into all truth. Okay? But this is not talking about a flippancy. The evil in your heart will cause you sorrow. Oh, you might get some joy for it now. But that's temporary fleeting. It dances and struts its stuff upon the stage, only to be heard of no more. It's the tale told by an idiot, full of sound and fury, which signifies nothing. Therefore, remove sorrow from thy heart, and put away evil from thy flesh. For childhood and youth are vanity. Because it doesn't last. Youth doesn't last. Even though the world and the television and the devil wants to, you know, uh, youth is king, thin is in, you know. Seeing some 60-year-old women trying to look as if they're, what's that term, a millennial? Like they're some porn star looking with, dressed up like a painted barn with war paint on, okay? And they're in their 60s trying to look like they're in their teens or early 20s? The beauty of the age is the gray head. Yeah. The fact that the Lord has been so merciful to you to let you... And you know that, that, that saying, only the good die young, but jerks live forever? Yeah. Yeah. And of course you can read that Isaiah chapter 57 verses 1 on to verse 2 about that. You know, the good are taken away uh, to spare them the evil that's coming. But you evil jerks out there, yeah, <laughs> judgments upon you. Read Isaiah chapter 57 verses 1 and 2. Okay. And 1 Corinthians chapter 13. Now, if, you know, being a child, there's a time and place for everything and a purpose for every season under heaven. Okay, that was Brad Eyes from Ecclesiastes chapter 3. There's a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, and that, a time to pick up that which is planted. Okay? A time to weep and a time to more and a time to laugh and a time to dance. There's a time to be young and a time to be old. Okay? But see, Paul tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, okay, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, just one verse, verse 11. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. Because childhood and youth are vanity. I thought as a child. When I was a child, I spake as a child. I understood as a child. I thought as a child. But when I became a man, I put away childish things. Well, when do you become a man? It's different for every person, spirit, soul, and body. Okay? There are some people out there who grow up very quickly. Okay? I've known of some uh, people who were abused, both physically and sexually. 
they grow up really quick. Also, those who have divorced parents, that tends to grow people up very quickly. But see, it all depends on the Lord and that child. And even though sometimes we get advanced in age, it seems that with a lot of people, especially uh, the enemies of our Lord Jesus Christ, especially my personal bitter enemies who would run me over with a car and beat me with a baseball bat and drown me in a lake. Um, you know, they're growing older. No, they're getting old, but yet they still seem like they're on a kindergarten playground. Hmm. You know? But see, if you have, if the Lord is gracious and merciful to you, and gives you the time to get to an advanced age. And like I said, I'm only 48 years of age. I'm only 48. Okay. And I don't know if I'm going to see 49. I don't know. And you know what? Many of you have heard, I'm sure, this, <laughs> this thing where um, people will say, I wouldn't change anything in my life because that is what the Lord used to bring me on to himself. Now, see, when you're a babe in Christ, then beg your pardon. I'm not a babe. I'm not a babe. The Lord saved me on April 28th, 2008. Okay? 14 years ago. I'm not a babe anymore. But when you're a babe, it sounds good. It's like, oh yeah, I, I mean, there, I wouldn't change anything. The path that I went through in life led me on to the Lord. But the older you get in life, the, you know, the sagging skin suit, and the longer you walk with the Lord, there is also another truth from the book of Ecclesiastes that we need to really remember, okay? Uh, Ecclesiastes chapter 1, verse 18. For in much wisdom is much grief, and he that increaseth knowledge increaseth sorrow. And much fear of the Lord is much grief. How so? You're going to have to give an account for everything you've ever done. And the more you know of our Lord and how perfect and how beautiful he is, and the standard of his word, like Paul, O oh, wretched man that I am, who shall deliver me from the body of this death? And see, that's where God's grace comes in. And these wicked free gracers, they have no concept of grace. Grace unto them is just an excuse to do sin. Okay? But... The longer you walk with the Lord, the more it's like, what would I not change if I could? <laughs> you know, looking back, yeah, when I was a babe, I used to say, oh, I wouldn't change anything because that's what the Lord used. Uh, I would have changed everything, virtually everything. I would have done Many things different. Because now I am suffering the consequences of my actions as a lost man. Forgiven, saved, going to heaven when I die. But see, even that, it doesn't remove the consequences of my actions. When I was a young man, lost, I smoked cigarettes and marijuana. Okay, I did, I drank, did cocaine and all kinds of stuff, sodomy and uh, adultery with a married woman. I did all kinds of evil things as a lost man. And the things that I did to my body, I'm paying for now. 
smoking cigarettes and then after you smoke a cigarette you smoke a joint and then you after you smoke a joint you smoke a cigarette because you think the smell of the cigarette's going to hide the smell of the joint and that's really working wonders on your lungs on your heart now or drinking alcohol to excess to get drunk like my my best friend asked me last night what would you not change? You know what I wouldn't change? I would not change that I dropped out of school. This nonsense they call school. Uh, actually, I w if I could change anything, I would have never gone to a school at all. Never. 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 But there are a lot of things, personally, that I would change. And if you walked at any time with the Lord, I reckon that you're, you are in the same boat like that, that there are a lot of things I would change. Unless you're ultra holy and perfect and that the Lord is giving you your dreams come true when you were a lost person. Yeah. Proverbs chapter 3, verses 1 on verse 8. You youngins out there, you're going to pay for the things that you do in your body and in your spirit. The Lord can save you no matter what. You have to come to him on his terms, but he can save you. But there's a condition, his condition, brokenness, contrition, and in fear, you call upon his name. You cannot overstep one of those and think you are actually saved. And it happens in a process that is a fell swoop. Okay? It's not step one, step two, step three. Are you saved, brother? It doesn't work that way. But Proverbs chapter three, verses one on verse eight. My son, forget not my law, but let thine heart keep my commandments. For length of days and long life and peace shall they add to thee. I wish I would have been saved in my early 20s. I wish I would have gotten saved at the age that some of you are. Being younger than I. Okay? Let not mercy and truth forsake thee. Bind them about thy neck. Write them upon the table of thine heart. So shalt thou find favor and good understanding in the sight of God and man. And we all know this. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart. And lean not onto thine own understanding. Because you and I don't know what is truly good and what is evil apart from the Lord Jesus Christ within you and the scriptures. Okay? In all thy ways acknowledge him and he shall direct thy paths. Be not wise in thine own eyes. Fear the Lord and depart from evil. It shall be health to thy navel. Tomorrow to thy bones. You young people out there, put them, put them damned cigarettes out. Throw them away. Getting drunk, you'll wake up with a hangover. Yes, yes, we've talked about this before. Uh, scripture does not have a problem with anyone using alcohol. It's to excess. Okay? All right? But um, that wicked tripe that you're looking at. You know, setting wicked things before your eyes. I'm 48 years of age and I can remember a lot of the music, that garbage death metal that I used to li uh, listen to. The beats. The beats. You know, the that kind of stuff. See? It cleaves to you. Oh, I would have changed a lot of things. Would have ne never listened to heavy metal or death metal. Would have never would have never watched a movie. Oh, wow. Would have never played a video game. I would have waited and uh, to lie with a woman till I met my wife. Would have never been a sodomite. Would have never smoked a, a cigarette joint, snorted cocaine, drank alcohol, and gotten drunk off of it. I would have never. Oh, 
<laughs> yeah. There's a whole lot of things I'd have changed, boy. And and go to 13 and 16 in Proverbs 3. Happy is the man that findeth wisdom, fear of the Lord. And the man that getteth understanding departing from evil. For the merchandise of it is better than the merchandise of silver, and the gain thereof than fine gold. She is more precious than rubies. The she is the fear of the Lord, like I've told you. The fear of the Lord is compared in Scripture unto a beautiful woman that you couldn't, can't even begin to imagine. Okay? She is more precious than rubies. And all the things that thou canst desire are not comparable unto her. Why? Because length of days is in her right hand, and in her left hand riches and honor. Okay? Oh, I'd have changed a lot of things. Even in my early days uh, in the walk in my walk with our Lord. But there again, he used that for his glory, you know, going through the charismatic thing and uh, trusting people who I should have never have trusted and calling people brother who I should have never have called brother. Um, you go through those things so that when others come to you, it's like, hey, you know, I've been through these things, you know. God uses it for his for his good, okay? Uh, go to 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3. You're a youngster, huh? You're saved, born again, and converted of the church of the living God? I know right offhand a couple of you that are in your 20s who I actually have converse with, and that frequently. You know this about how you're going to pay uh, for your actions. Not salvifically. The Lord's forgiven you, but you're going, to some, you're going to reap what you sow. Learn from some old farts' mistakes. 1 Peter chapter 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verses 10 on to verse 12. For he that will love life and see good days, let him refrain his tongue from evil and his lips that they speak no guile. Let him eschew evil and do good. Let him seek peace and ensue it. Now, this is a reference on to Psalm 34, verses 12 on to verse 14. Okay? For the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous, and his ears are open unto their prayers. But the face of the Lord is against them that do evil. And you might look at verse 10 and say, well, for he that will love life. Doesn't the Lord say that we're not supposed to love this life? Some of you might be thinking, well, isn't that a contradiction? No. No, it isn't. No, it isn't. The younger that you can come to the Lord on his terms and he saves you, the better it's going to be for your life. And you, you got these wicked devils out there who are corrupting young children. And when I say young, I mean 20-somethings, okay? 20-somethings, all right? Uh, most 20-year-olds, most, not all, I know of some really good exceptions to this rule, okay? A couple that I know personally. Um, but most 20-year-olds think they know something, think they're all that. Unfortunately, the master's apprentice is a good example to that. Sad example to that. That little boy was used as a pawn by his master to take a fall for his master that his master himself would never take. You see me, little boy? I pity you and I feel sorry for you because you took a dive for your master that he didn't have the stones to take himself. I'm sorry for you. I really am. But it says here in verse 10, for he that will love life. But like I said, some of you, it's like, well, the Lord says that we're not supposed to love our life. Go to John chapter 12. John chapter 12, 
verses 24 on to verse 26. Verily, verily, I say unto you, except the corn of wheat fall into the ground and die, it abideth alone. But if it die, it bringeth forth much fruit. And in order for you to be born again, something has to die. For something, for a new creature to come, something has to die. Yourself. Your self-righteousness. He that loveth his life shall lose it. See, man, ah, ah, ah. And he that hateth this life in this world shall keep it unto life eternal. So if someone loves their life here in this world, that's what this means, okay? You love your life. I know of some Christians, uh, Christians, I'm not a Christian, by the way. I know of some Christians who just, life is hunky-dory all the time, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. You high? Doesn't work that way. Doesn't work that way. Those who will live godly in Christ Jesus will suffer persecution. I know of millionaire Christians who life, whose life is hunky-dory every day. They don't, they're not troubled like other men. Even some of these Christians here, here on YouTube, they're not troubled like other men. They don't have, they're, they're not concerned about paying their bills, whether or not they can feed their family. Because they're charlatans. They love their life down here. Now, the life that the Lord gives us to lead for his glory as ambassadors, that's something different. Because it's no glory unto us, but unto him, because we are living for someone else, not ourselves. But see, this is talking about someone who lives for themselves. How many of these people that you watch, how many of them are living for themselves? <laughs> Think I do this for myself? I know some of you do, but come on, come on. I've, I've dealt with enough jerks in my life, okay? And the one I look at in the mirror too, okay? Yes, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And he that hateth his life in this world. It's talking about those who love their life in this world. shall keep it unto life eternal. If any man serve me, let him follow me. And where I am, there shall also my servant be. And if any man serve me, him will my father honor. Okay? Okay? And of course, and of course, there's only, when it comes to life, he that loveth his life shall lose it. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. Satan offers you a life. Okay, like the video that was done yesterday that I spoke about. Um, Satan offers you a life. But it's a life predicated upon the things of the world. Our Lord offers you the life himself. He is the way, the truth, and the life. And see, sooner or later, you're going to have to reach a point where there are no other options for you. There are no other options for you. The Lord will bring, uh, bring you to a place where you're going to have to depend on him no matter what. See, the problem is with so many people who call themselves Christians and aren't even of the church of the living God, not saved, born again, converted. God's there as a backup plan. There to bless what they want to do. But yet they still trust in the work of their own hands. John chapter 6 is very telling. John chapter 6, verses 61 on to verse 69. Doth this offend you? 
<laughs> when Jesus knew in himself that his disciples murmured at it, he said unto them, Doth this offend you? That you can't rely on yourself? Hmm? Many people give lip service. Oh, well, of course I depend on the Lord. When it's for something of your own endeavor. But when you have no other option. Whereas if the Lord doesn't do something, nothing's going to happen. And that's the case how it is anyway. See, Christianity, even these good King James Bible-believing Christians here on YouTube, they preach a form of self-sufficiency, not Christ-dependency. Christ-dependency only as kind of an afterthought just to bless what you want. It doesn't work that way. And I'd be, I'd be very cautious about those types of Christians, any Christian in general, you know. But what and if ye shall see the Son of Man ascend up where he was before? It is the Spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. And Jesus Christ, he is the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by him. And he says, sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. He is the life. Okay? And the words that he speaks, they are truth and they are life. Verse 64. But there are some of you that believe not. Oh, I believe in Jesus. I believe in Jesus. Which one do you believe in? One of the authorized version of the scriptures? Well, yes. Well, wait a minute. The Jesus of the authorized version of scriptures, uh, in order for him to save you, you have to be broken of your self-righteousness. You have to have contrition. It's your fault. And you better fear him. But when you have people saying, oh, I believe in Jesus, even the Jesus in the authorized version of the scriptures, Brad, but I just believe. Repentance is going from unbelief to belief. That's, that's, that's not... That's not Jesus. That's not Jesus. That's that man of sin, the son of perdition. Okay? But there is, and remember, the devils also believe and tremble. And also, too, you believe in the Jesus of the scriptures? Uh, is that the second person in a three-person trinity? Come on now. Come on now. But there are some of you that believe not. For Jesus knew from the beginning who they were that believed not and who should betray him. And he said, Therefore said I unto you, that no man can come unto me except it were given unto him of my father. From that time many of his disciples went back and walked no more with him. Then said Jesus unto the twelve, Will ye go away also? Will ye also go away? Right here. Then Shimon Peter answered him, Lord, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the words of eternal life, and we believe and are sure that thou art that Christ, the Son of the living God, anointed one. That's what Christ means. Exclusive. This Jesus that I speak to you of is the Jesus of the authorized version of the Scriptures. The Word made flesh. You know, Jesus Christ is come in the flesh. Okay? There are no other options. And the sooner that the Lord breaks you and you accede to that breaking and you don't fight it, let it happen. Let it happen. Those of you who are younger than I, in your 20s, and are actually saved, born again, converted, you have an advantage. The one advantage I have on you is that I'm older. And because of my sin as a lost man, I'm paying for it. And you can use that as an example. The sooner the better. 
Better late than never. Absolutely. Amen. 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 But the sooner the better. Okay? The sooner the better. And you also have to remember this, dear friend. Romans chapter 14. Romans chapter 14. Verses 11 and 12, if my fingers will get there. Romans chapter 14, verses 11 and 12. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. Uh, uh, verse 11. For it is written, As I live, saith the Lord, every knee shall bow to me, and every tongue shall confess to God. So then every one of us shall give account of himself to God. You're going to give an account of yourself. Whether at the great white throne or the judgment seat of Christ where the saved, those who get redeemed, the saved give uh, account at the judgment seat of Christ. All else at the great white throne. But you see, you're not, you're not going to get away with anything. You're going to give an account. For every action there is a reaction. There's always a consequence. Now, the Lord can deliver you from some of your consequences. But being saved delivers you from hell and his wrath. But it doesn't always necessarily mean that it delivers you from the consequences that you did. Remember in 1 Corinthians chapter thir uh, 3, what that says? Okay. Verses 16 on to verse 17. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God, and that the Spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. For the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. What about before you, the Lord dwelt in you? You had a faulty temple, you could say, maybe. Maybe. You know? You're going to give an account. For every action, there is a reaction, dear friend. And also go to Galatians chapter 6. Galatians chapter 6, verses 2 on to verse 9. Bear ye one another's burdens, and so fulfill the law of Christ. For if a man think himself to be something when he is nothing, he deceiveth himself. You sure you're saved? Just because you believe? Oh, repentance is going from unbelief to belief, or it's a work, or praying is a work, or calling us. Shut up! Go to hell already! Which is where you're leading people with that nonsense, man. But let every man prove his own work. And then shall he have rejoicing in himself alone and not in another. For every man shall bear his own burden. Let him that is taught in the word communicate unto him that teacheth in all good things. Be not deceived. God is not mocked. For whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. For he that soweth to his flesh shall of the flesh reap corruption. But he that soweth to the Spirit shall of the Spirit, and those are capital S spirits, reap life everlasting. The Lord has forgiven me of my sins of the past, all of them. I'm forgiven. But what I did to this, what I did to this with the wicked things before mine eyes. <laughs> you know, that's why, like, brother, uh, our beloved brother Alexander Hartley and uh, our brother um, Joyful Noise, you know, when you, when the world's music comes into your head, sing a, sing a hymn, okay? Replace it, all right? Uh, I'm not that well versed in hymns. <laughs> but uh, it's good advice. The best advice is to stay away from it altogether. Hey, little boy. Your grandfather letting you watch this? You take heed to this, little boy. You do what your grandfather tells you. Because he's of our Lord Jesus Christ, son. And when he opens this book by you, you listen to what he says. Okay? You listen to what he says, little boy. Okay? You're a little child. 
and your father and mother, might, you might be watching this. Take heed to these things. Get rid of that worldly nonsense. Turn away from the television. Stop with the video games. You don't want to be like what you see on TV. You don't. Trust me on that. Because what you see on TV is fantasy. Okay? It's not reality. 1 Peter chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4. <clears throat> Excuse me. 1 Peter chapter 4, verses 1 on to verse 5. For as much then as Christ has suffered for us in the flesh, arm yourselves likewise with the same mind. For he that has suffered in the flesh has ceased from sin, that he no longer should live the rest of his time in the flesh to the lusts of men, but to the will of God. The sooner you get saved, Better it is. Better late than never. But the sooner that you get saved, that the Lord saves you, the better it is. The less damage you do here, the less damage you do to this. <laughs> oh, I would have changed a whole lot of things, boy. For the time past of our life may suffice us to have wrought the will of the Gentiles. When we walked in lascivious, lasciviousness, lusts, excess of wine, revelings, banquetings, and abominable idolatries, usually centered around, I, 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 me, 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 me. Yeah. Wherein they think it strange that ye run not with them to the same excess of riot, speaking evil of you. Who shall give account to him that is ready to judge the quick alive and the dead. Who cares if you're friends? Put. Who cares if your friends mock you because you are of the church of God and you want to do what the Lord says? It's not a wasted life, son. That's the life that you ought to be living. One, one second. One second. And also remember Hebrews chapter 9. Hebrews chapter 9, verses 24 on to verse 28. For Christ has not entered into the holy places made with hands, which are the figures of the true. Okay? But into heaven itself, now to appear in the presence of God for us nor yet that he should offer himself often like the Roman Catholics do their mass, their damnable mass every day or whatever. It's a daily sacrifice, re-sacrificing the Lord according to them. Nonsense, okay? As the high priest entereth into the holy place every year with the blood of others, usually that was at Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. For then must he, he that, for then must he often have suffered since the foundation of the world. But now, once in the end of the world, hath he appeared to put away sin by the sacrifice of himself. Yeah. God shall provide himself a lamb for burnt offering. Genesis 22, verse 8. Who was on the cross? Yeah. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment... So Christ was once offered to bear the sins of many. And unto them that look for him shall he appear the second time without sin unto salvation. You are going to die. Some of you not for a very long time. Some of you. <laughs> Some of you. Some of you a lot quicker. And you wicked devils out there. You're not dead yet because uh, you're going to face judgment. <laughs> the good die young. Jerks live forever. I, very quickly, uh, Isaiah chapter 57 on that. I, I mentioned that at the beginning of this video. Isaiah chapter 57, okay? Isaiah chapter 57, 1 and 2. 
The righteous perisheth, and no man layeth it to heart. And merciful men are taken away, none considering that the righteous is taken away from the evil to come. Some of you wicked, scoundrel, devil, evil people out there, you know, good die young, but the evil live forever. Yeah, you're going to face judgment. We're all going to give an account of ourselves to God, yes. But woe be to some of you devils out there so that the judgment that you're going to face in this life, in the flesh that you worship so much. He shall enter into peace. They shall rest in their beds, each one walking in his uprightness. Okay? But see, knowing this, that your youth is not going to last forever, even though the world tells you that you can try to make it and you see the 60-year-old uh, women with plastic in their face, dressed up with war paint like a whore, okay? Dressed like a whore, okay? Trying to look like a millennial, a teenager. The beauty of the age is the gray head. The same with the men trying to be these little twiggy things. Psalm 39, verses 4 on to verse 8. Lord, make me to know mine end and the measure of my days, what it is that I may know how frail I am. Behold, thou hast made my days as in hand breath. That ain't that big. And mine age is as nothing before thee because he's eternal. Okay. Verily, every man at his best state is altogether vanity. Salah. <laughs> at your best, your age is nothing. You know, the age of a man in comparison to a mountain is a, is a joke. But unto our Lord Jesus Christ, God our Father, it doesn't even exist. He's eternal. Surely every man walketh in a vain shoe. Surely they are disquieted in vain. He heapeth up riches and knoweth not who shall gather them. Gather all your riches to hoard them in a barn and then you die and then you give it off to a charity that's usually linked onto the Vatican. Why don't you get a homeless person a home? Why don't you take a homeless person out for a meal? Why don't you put uh, clothing on a homeless person? Why don't you give them a gospel tract? But no. No. Those, those are certain types of people you don't want to be around, right? And now, Lord, what wait I for? My hope is in thee. Deliver me from all my transgressions. Make me not the reproach of the foolish. Reproach of the foolish, those who behave as if they say in their heart there is no God. And of course, Psalm of Moses. Prayer of Moses, excuse me. That's Psalm 90. Verses 8 on to verse 12. Thou hast set our iniquities before thee, our secret sins in the light of thy countenance. There ain't anything you're pulling. You ain't pulling the wool over God's eyes, son. Daughter, it ain't happening. For all our days are passed away in thy wrath. We spend our years as a tale that is told. The days of our years are threescore years and ten. That's 70 years. The average lifespan of man today is between 70 and 80 years. And remember, God shortened the length of the uh, lifespan of man. He said man shall live 120 years at the most. Okay, That didn't happen gradually. It didn't happen right away. It happened gradually. Okay, You start seeing after that and uh, after the flood, I believe that is. Um, where man started, his years started to diminish, whereas Adam lived nearer to a thousand years 
uh, by the time that Abram, who would become Abraham, was what, near only 400, 200, even 100? It started to depreciate because God set a time limit on man's life, 120 years. Okay? So, the days of our years are three score years and ten, 70 years. And if by reason of strength they be four score years, 80, score is two, okay? Yet is their strength labor and sorrow, for it is soon cut off and we fly away. This is not a reference onto the redemption of the purchased possession. I know there are some out there who would like to romanticize it into talking about the um, redemption of the purchased possession. Who knoweth the power of thine anger? Even according to thy fear, so is thy wrath. So teach us to number our days, that we may apply our hearts unto wisdom, the fear of the Lord. To number your days. Your days are numbered. The Lord knows what you're doing. The Lord takes into account your stupidity, my stupidity. Okay? Our days are numbered. He is aware of what you're going to do to your body. He is aware of what you're going to do to your mind. Okay? He is aware of it. But your days are numbered. Yes, you do have a set number of days given to you of the Lord. You do. Absolutely. People like to dispute that, but I baloney sandwiches. What? Is he he's either the Lord of all or the Lord of nothing? Okay, it's no it, half this, half that. He's either God of all or God of nothing. But your days are numbered. You're going to die. You're going to get old, Lord willing. Or like Stephen, who went home, who knows how old he actually was. Probably in his 20s or maybe early 30s at the most. Okay. But he went home to be with the Lord. What would have happened if Stephen's life was prolonged? Hmm? What happened if he lived up to 80? Wow, huh? Wow. But see, we have his testimony in Scripture that lives forever. So we need to number our days, brethren. Because some of us Go to 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. 2 Timothy chapter 4. Verses 5 on verse 8. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. For I am now ready to be offered and the time of my departure is at hand. Paul knew it. Paul knew it. I have fought a good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. Henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. You know, it, it's, it's kind of weird to know that there are people out there who really do wish you would die. You know? I mean, it really is. But see, henceforth, there is laid up for me a crown of righteousness, which the Lord, the righteous judge, shall give me at that day. And not to me only, but unto all them also that love his appearing. I'm going to heaven when I die. And some of you, you think you're going to repent on your deathbed and get in, and you've lived your whole life as a scoundrel devil, deceived and being deceived. You poor creature, you. And also go to 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1. 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 10 on to verse 15. 
First Peter chapter one. Or uh, wait a second, is uh, Second Peter chapter one? Yes. <laughs> Second Peter, excuse me, I wrote down First Peter. Second Peter chapter one, verses ten on to verse fifteen. Wherefore, the rather, brethren, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if ye do these things, ye shall never fall. For so an entrance shall be ministered unto you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Wherefore, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, though ye know them and be established in the present truth. Yea, I think it meet, as long as I am in this tabernacle to stir you up by putting you in remembrance. Knowing that shortly I must put off this my tabernacle, even as our Lord Jesus Christ has shewed me. Moreover, I will endeavor that ye may be able after my decease to have these things always. In remembrance. I don't know how much longer I have. I really don't. I really don't. As long as I got, I'm going to be doing this. Because this is what the Lord has called me to do. And then one day you'll hear that I've gone home. My brother Alexander, my best friend, he's going to uh, he's going to do the eulogy. Um, I'm going to be buried. Um, my brother, my best friend Alexander Hartley, he will receive all the. I have a box of scriptures filled with King James scriptures and all the books and stuff like that. Uh, of course, uh, what my wife she gets first dibs because she is my wife. But uh, like the other things like that, uh, her and uh, Brother Alexander are going to be the ones that pretty much work that out. And also now let's go to Philippians chapter 3. Philippians chapter 3. Verses 1 on to verse 3. Finally, my brethren, rejoice in the Lord. To write the same things to you, to me indeed, is not grievous. But for you it is safe. Beware of dogs that bark. Oh, that's a good idea for a link for the video or description box. Thank you. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Beware of the concision. For we are the circumcision which worship God in the spirit and rejoice in Christ Jesus and have no confidence in the flesh. Like I said, I don't know how long I got. And I know that makes some of you happy. I'm going to heaven. Some of you aren't. Even though you think you are. Even though you play off that you are going to go. I'm going to heaven. 1 Samuel chapter 12. Just one verse. 1 Samuel. Come on. 1 Samuel chapter 12. As long as I'm here, as long as the Lord gives me breath, I'm going to continue to do this until he takes me home. There are some things that we have looked into recently. Um, you know, for my wife's sake, I've considered, uh, considered going, seeing a doctor. I would kind of like to know what's exactly wrong with my heart, but, you know, with a lot of the symptoms, you know, but we we're, we're, we're see what the Lord will do. But 1 Samuel chapter 12, verse 3, Behold, here I am, witness against me before the Lord and before his anointed. Whose ox have I taken? Or whose ass have I taken? Or whom have I defrauded? Whom have I oppressed? Or of whose hand have I received any bribe? to blind mine eyes therewith, and I will restore you. And of course, Acts chapter 20, Acts chapter 20, 
verses 31 on to verse 33. Acts chapter 20, verses 31 on to verse 33. Therefore watch and remember that by the space of three years, I cease not to warn every one night and day with tears. And incidentally, it is going on three years since the Lord has called me to this position. And now, brethren, I commend you to God and to the word of his grace, which is able to build you up and to give you an inheritance among all them which are sanctified. I have coveted no man's silver or gold or apparel. Like I said, as long as I'm here, you're going to have to deal with it. And as long as I'm here, I'm going to annoy a select few people who would kill me if they could. Not going to get rid of me. That's up to the Lord. And the Lord might be getting, might be taking me home pretty soon enough. But until then, you're going to have to deal with this creepy smile and that annoying voice. Yeah. Okay. But let's finish this off with the most appropriate chapter in Scripture, which talks about getting old. And you know what? Like that devil Carlin who is in hell said himself, we like to pull one over on ourselves, don't we? We'll look in the mirror, and it's like, well, looks like I'm getting older. No. And like Carlin said, older sounds better. It even lasts, sounds like it'll last a little longer, right? I'm getting old. I'm getting old. I'm only 48. I'm only 48. But I'm getting old. And the damage I did to my body as a lost man, I'm paying for. The Lord has forgiven me and saved me and sealed me unto the day of redemption. But my consequences for what I did as a lost man, especially to my body, I'm paying for now. You're going to reap what you sow, little boy. Take heed. Best get yourself right with the Lord now. The sooner the better. Ecclesiastes chapter 12. Remember now thy creator in the days of thy youth, while the evil days come not, nor the years draw nigh, where, where when thou shalt say, I have no pleasure in them. While the sun, or the light, or the moon, or the stars be not darkened, nor the clouds return after the rain. In the day when the keepers of the house shall tremble, it's talking about your legs, trembling legs. And the strong men shall bow themselves, and the grinders' teeth, and the grinders cease because they are few, and those that look out the windows be darkened, losing your sight. And the doors shall be shut in the streets, when the sound of grinding is low, going deaf. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird, at the and. And he shall rise up at the voice of the bird. Older, the older you get, it seems that you rise up earlier. Not everybody. You know, my, our, my best friend is a, an exception to that and also others. But generally, the older you get, it's like you go to bed earlier and you wake up even earlier, you know. My wife, to this day, she still wakes up between 2.30 and 3 in the morning. Okay? So... Yes, and the doors shall be shut in the streets when the sound of the grinding is low and he shall rise up at the voice of the bird and the daughters of music shall be brought low again about the hearing also when he, they shall be afraid of that which is high being afraid of heights and fear shall be in the way you're afraid to walk sometimes because you might fall over or get hurt or something like that and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and desire shall fail. 
that burning, that lust that men and even women have, but also desire shall fail. What else? Like, how much stuff do you need? What else? What more do you want? Having food and raiment therewith, let us be content. Well, you're going to be like the guy that our Lord talked about. He's like, you know, I got so much uh, stuff and I don't have room in my barn. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pull down my barns and build greater, build greater so I can put all my stuff in it. Like Carlin himself said, a house is a place for you to keep your stuff while you go out and get more stuff, right? And then you get more stuff and then all of a sudden you're like, wow, I, need, I don't have enough room for my stuff, so I got to get something bigger for my... Desire shall fail. You know, there's nothing I want. I want to wake up. I want to read the word. I want to be a husband unto my wife. I want to pay my bills. And I want to speak the gospel, hand out tracts, that kind of stuff. But other than that, there's nothing I want. And that comes with time. You'll get that way in time if he gives it to you. Because what else is there? Like we already saw in Psalm 39. What else do I hope for? My hope is in thee. The appeal of that has faded. Even so, come Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. And when they shall be afraid of that which is high, and fear shall be in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall be a burden, and should desire shall fail, because man goeth to his long home, and the mourners go about the streets. Or ever the silver cord be loosed, loosed, <laughs> or the golden bowl be broken, or the pitcher be broken at the fountain, or the wheel broken at the cistern. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the Spirit shall return unto God who gave it. Dust, unto dust thou art, unto dust thou shalt return. That Spirit that the Lord gave us, he breathed into, our, uh, into man's mouth and made him a living soul. Okay? It's not a capital S Spirit. That Spirit of life that you have, that God gave you, no matter who you are, okay? Vanity of vanities, saith the preacher. All this vanity. And moreover, because the preacher was wise, he still taught the people knowledge. Yea, he gave good heed and sought out and set in order many proverbs. Amen. The preacher sought to find out acceptable words, and that which was written was upright, even words of truth. The words of the wise are as goads and as nails fastened by the masters of assemblies, which are given from one shepherd. And further by these, my son, be admonished of making many books. There is no end. Be admonished of making many books. There is no end. Yeah. Even to, okay, that, that's one thing to amend what I said. Uh, that is one thing every once in a while. It, but that's really diminished quite, quite readily. I got enough books, but still, if, if there's something that uh, I want to know, I'll, I'll look, it's like, oh, there's a book on it. You know, books. Yeah. And much study is a weariness to the flesh. Of the flesh, excuse me. Much study is weird is a weariness of the flesh. Yeah, yeah. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. And how many too often give into their flesh rather than spending the hour to two hours that you ought to in Scripture studying the Word of God. 
Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God. And keep his commandments. This was written under a different dispensation. Got to remember that. If you haven't figured this out, this is instruction in righteousness. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. There are people who I have known over these years that um, I called friend who I should have never called friend. I called a brother who I should have never called a brother. There are some out there who I actually do think are saved, but flesh, like always, gets in the way. For those of you whom I have once knew, and no longer speak to, who I was cordial with at one time. Even those, some of you that hate me, right? Um, I have no ill will toward any of you. What you believe, now that's a different thing, okay? Like there were some that were very instrumental and bringing us to this place and did so much for us, but they went crazy and believed some very heretical things and tried to attribute that onto me as well. It's like, no, no. And then there were others out there who um, have a big mouth and trying to turn everyone against me and that kind of stuff. Even people like that. I've got no problem with you. You got a problem with me. I can't help that. And for those of you whom I've offended of the Church of the Living God who are actually saved, if I've offended you in something, I'm, I repent. But I have no regrets or no repentance for anything that the Lord has spoken me through me. I have no regret or repent of nothing that I have taught. Okay? Things that I needed to repent of, they were I repented of them. The uh, evidence is on the channel. Errors that were made, uh, publicly repented of them. That's the way I do things. Okay? If a brother or a sister uh, rebukes me and something needs to be repented of, a video comes. Okay, on the channel, you can find videos of where I've publicly repented of error and I leave them up so you can see. But I have no repentance or no regret or remorse of anything that I've said or taught or will continue to teach because I'm not the one who's doing it. I have no regrets like that and I have no remorse or repent, or repent of nothing. I stand upon this. I stand upon this. And I have no regret or repentance for some of the harsh things I've said to my bitter enemies who have made their choice serving the Vatican and are going to hell. I have no regrets or any repentance for calling you names, you filth. I have no regrets or repentance of that. Actually, um, you can go down to where you're going to go at any time because you have made your choice. You are, uh, you are the Lord's enemy. I have no regrets or repentance for speaking such against the enemies of the Lord. None. I have no regrets. I have regrets as a lost man, what things I did, like I said, there were a lot of things I could would change. But when it comes to what is produced here, the Lord produces here, excuse me, through this, I have no re regrets. I have no repentance or no remorse of anything. There are people, like I said, I wish I never have met. 
and there are some people which I wish had never gone away. But flesh always gets in the way. And until the Lord decides to take me home, as for me and my house, we will serve the Lord.